In today's vlog, I'm going to talk about photography stuff, but secretly what I really want to talk about is how good is Cobra Kai? Seriously, it's so good. Mercy! Welcome back, and before we get started, quick reminder about my podcast. It's called Photobomb. It comes out every week. Co-host it with my good friend, Boo Ray Perry, and I'll put a link to that in the description and to his YouTube channel up there somewhere, if you're depending on what you're watching this on. I want to talk to you this week about a couple of things that went on in the studio, and I'm going to put a time code if you want to skip to the five things I take on headshot sessions and skip all this, that's fine, but you might want to watch because it's pretty cool. So because of the global pandemic, a lot of us have been trying to find more interesting ways to diversify our studios and make money. And this week I did that with remote product photography, and I'm going to show you how I did it. I know that most of us like to spend our time photographing beautiful people in beautiful places all over the world, but have you thought about photographing industrial oil filters and accessories? Industrial oil filters. Accessories. I know it doesn't sound very sexy, but it was actually a pretty cool shoot. Crude oil. So crude. Product photography can be great. You don't always get the most interesting products in the world. Industrial oil filters. Oh my. But using modern technology, I was able to photograph live remotely with a client so that they could see the images as I was shooting them and help me make corrections as I went along. So essentially the way it worked was this. The client shipped me the product and then we set up a time to actually have the shoot so that they could follow along as I did it. Now before the shoot, I've created a Dropbox and shared that link with all of the necessary people on the client end. And then I set up the Capture One process recipe, which is basically an export preset, to send web-sized images to the Dropbox. So as I was shooting every few images, I would just export that batch, and then about a minute later, the client would see it live on their end in the Dropbox. So I would set up one product, and I would shoot it, then I would send the images to the client, and then I'd wait for verification that everything was okay. Now, this client didn't, but you can't even set up a Zoom call or a Skype or a FaceTime or however you wanna do it to even have them live with you, but I've shot for them before, so they were pretty sure that I was gonna do a good job. But in this case, they needed the products photographed but didn't wanna send anybody from their team over because of the pandemic. One of the things that made this successful was going in with a shot list. The client sent me a list of the images they wanted ahead of time, examples, and different configurations of these oil filters. Oil filters. Ooh, so crude. And now all I gotta do is box up the oil filters. Industrial oil filters. And send them back to the client. I know you know what I'm gonna say next. I want you to like and subscribe and hit the bell so you get notifications. All that jazz, just do it. Then we can move forward as friends in harmony. Wouldn't that be nice? A lot of my work has always been on location. And over the years, I've developed the habit of carrying a few things with me that's gonna make my job a little easier, make my client feel well taken care of, and ultimately make the images turn out better. Thing number one, a lint roller. Now you might say, duh, of course take a lint roller. Yeah, I get it, but do you actually take one with you and do you actually use it? Not only does it solve a problem for you editing potentially where you're not gonna go in and do a thousand pieces of lint, but it also makes a client feel like you're on the ball and you're taking care of things. In the past, I've often used this even when a client doesn't need it, if I just need an extra second to chat with them and help them calm down and to show them that I'm giving them a better level of service than they would have gotten elsewhere. Now, during the pandemic, I typically will like let them do it themselves so that I don't get too close to them, but it is a great thing to have. It can save you a lot of time editing and it really does make the client feel like your level of service is a little bit higher than someone else's might have been. Number two, a hand mirror. Pretty obvious why you would need to bring a mirror to a photo shoot on location, but it's a lot easier than taking my full length one. And since most of what I do is headshots, this really helps people to be able to make sure they don't have something in their teeth and just to give them a little bit more confidence going into the shoot before we start taking pictures. Number three, you know it, you love it. It's about a million dollars a roll, gaffer's tape, but not just any gaffer's tape, brightly colored gaffer's tape. Sometimes you want black gaffer's tape to conceal what you're trying to pin down and sometimes you want to make sure that people will see it. For example, I use this to mark where I want my client to stand. I use this to put down cables in areas where they might be walking across to make sure that they see it. I use this to tape off where the bases of my light stands go, and it works a lot better. People notice it a lot more. Funny story though, the first time I brought green gaffer's tape instead of black, the carpet ended up being lime green and you couldn't see it anyway, and the black was actually more visible. So keep a couple rolls of different brightly colored gaffer's tape in your bag and it can really come in handy. Number four, and one of my favorites, wardrobe tape. Now this stuff has a thousand uses. It's essentially just double-sided tape that's used to stick fabric together without damaging it. This is a secret from the entertainment industry and the fashion industries for many, many years. And I don't know that many photographers that take it with them, but I have this stash in all kinds of places 
so that I always have it with me. Probably my main use for this is men's dress shirts. So to make those collars stand up when they're wilted at the end of the day, to cover up that brightly colored, unsightly undershirt underneath when a man doesn't wear a tie, to make jackets stick to the dress shirt underneath so that they don't fall away, it's excellent for all kinds of uses. It doesn't damage fabric and it can really improve the polish of your photos and make you seem like you're on the ball. One of the problems I deal with the most in retouching is shiny skin, and that's where number five comes in. This is a fixing compact powder from Essence called All About Matte. It's translucent, it works with every skin tone, and it can cut the shine on skin in just a few seconds worth of work. Applied with some non-latex wedges, you can get somebody from shiny and gross to looking smooth and cool and dry in just a few seconds. And I realized that just sounded a lot like a makeup commercial, but it's not. Anyway, I put the link to all of this stuff in the description of this video. If you're watching this on IGTV, hop over to YouTube and check it out because all of the information and the links to all of these things are gonna be in the description. And these are things that I use all the time. There's nothing sponsored about this video. This is stuff that I buy out of my own pocket and that I use all the time and hopefully it'll make your life easier. So that's it. I can come up with plenty more, but those, you know, was that five things? I mean, technically it was six because the makeup sponges were like an extra thing. Yeah, anyway, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that jazz, and I'll see you in the next video.